Hey, what's good, King? So, first off, introduce yourself to the people. I am Darian Wilson, I'm also known as Pharrell on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? I got a few nicknames, but I'm Darian Wilson, 26 years old, uh, and uh, I'm also, you know, one of my biggest differences from a lot of people is I'm an, I'm an epileptic, so, you know, I have seizures from time to time. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, and that brought me to a dark place. You know what I'm saying? So mm. uh, I okay. had to I had to learn things from different people, different uh, situations, because you can't always learn something from a certain person. Sometimes you gotta find something to learn. Mm. You know? So you sound like you've learned from many things in life. So, I, yeah. Um, tell us a, a little bit about your upbringing. Um, I was born in Southside Jamaica, Queens, and um, you know, I still, I still look at it as you know, the hood. But it wasn't, you know, too crazy. It wasn't too much going on, and I and I love my hood. Like always being here, it gives me peace. You know, and not just because of. I don't even I don't even know how to say that. I feel like being around people that you grew up with gives you like a few euphoria. Mm, the nostalgia. Yeah, nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel you like when I pass, once I get to the Ave, I feel like I'm home. Yeah, yeah. Word. But those are like the that's like the barriers. <laughs> it don't matter if I'm coming from Harlem or uh, Texas. Yeah. Once you there. <laughs> It's not even New York, it's just <laughs> Jamaica. Jamaica Avenue, that's like, you can just look around and just be like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I share that, and that's that's something beautiful. I share that same feeling with you, mm. you know? I like that. And uh, another thing about my upbringing, uh, you know, I was born in 1994, and I feel like my era, like the 90s and the and the early 2000s, that's another thing that gives me that nostalgia, like the songs that came out at that time mm. and um, the memories that I have with, you know, certain friends and, you know, those times really bring me peace. Sometimes I, sometimes I, I look and just think like, yo, I remember when I was a kid, I used to always wish, you know, I could go into the future, mm. but now I feel like I wish I could go to the, back into the past. Uh, you know? and that's really deep too. Speaking of the past, what were some of your religious? What's your religious background? So it was kind of like a it was kind of a battle for me because mm. you know, my mom's side was Buddhist and my father's side was Christian. And um, my mom's side, my mom's side of the family, they were more like really, you know, they would go to the, the temple every Sunday or then my father would go to the church every Sunday. Mm. And I, I really had a choice. And because I felt, like when I was young, I felt like I respected my mom's side more, I chose to be a voice. I'm sorry to cut you off. Do you remember when you made the decision? Like, um, around what age you made the decision? I don't really, but it's just, it's just because of the fact that I was around the religion more. Mm. I okay. feel like if my father went to church more than my mom's side of the family went to their temple, I felt like I would've. So, in, a, in another word, in another way of looking at it, it kind of, it kind of wasn't a choice. It's kind of like what, what your your environment, your environment kind of kind of. I don't want to use the word manipulates, but it kind of drags you to a certain certain side because you're young. You don't really know stuff. Mm. And religion wasn't really when I was young. Religion wasn't really one of my you know most paid attention attention to topics. I was you know more into video games and and stuff like that. 
things that entertain you, you know? Mm. So, but uh, as the years pass, uh, me, being a, me being a Buddhist, it just, I, don't, I didn't feel like it was working for me. Mm. Um, I actually, went, I, went, I kind of went back and forth. I don't think that was working either. You know, you, you gotta you gotta stay loyal to what you believe in. Mm. So, you know, I knew one day I was just gonna have to choose something and stick with that, and not and you know co convince whatever God, if there are many gods, that you know I'm with you. Mm. So I I really, um, you know, like I said, I have seizures and stuff, and I couldn't keep jobs. And I got really depressed, like in my late teens, I got kicked out of my family's house because, you know, I just couldn't, I, I, I was kind of lazy too. And, and when I really didn't have nothing left, mm -hmm. I was in a homeless shelter. My family wasn't answering my calls. I really felt alone. I think that was it, like really, like, you know, everybody feels lonely, you know, feel like you don't have friends, you don't have somebody to talk to, but I really knew, you know, I'm in a homeless shelter, I'm looking bummy, like nobody's even gonna wanna talk to me mm. if I try to, you know? Mm. So I was like, you know, before I start talking to myself, I'm gonna just talk to God. Mm, that's beautiful. So, and I felt like, the, I felt like the, the one God that was listening to me was, the Father of Jesus Christ. Mm. And, um, I, I felt like he was telling me, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't actually read the Holy Bible. Everybody tells me, maybe I should. But um, I, I look for, I kind of look for the answer that I think he's given me, and some, I could see how. That could be a bad thing, because sometimes you might not get the correct answer. Mm. Like you might, you might just think you're getting that, but God might be telling you that in a different way. You know, it's just. It's I hard. totally on it. I, 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 yes, yeah. yes, I get it. So I, you know, I, I, I felt like God was telling me like what I was saying earlier about love. There's love and there's hate, and I know that love always wins. So I was like, you know, let me think about, is there hate in my life? And I know there is, there's hate in everybody's life and hate mm. can always grow. You can think you, 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 you can think you exasperated all of the hate in your life, but in the future, hate might pop up again, you know, and that bubble will grow. Mm. So uh, I just, I try to minimize the hate, exercise the love, and I started seeing myself get happy, even though I'm a person that has seizures, I can't keep certain jobs. Uh, you know, I did things in the past that I can't take back, but I'm still happy because I have love. I couldn't, I really couldn't find a girlfriend. That, you know, a lot of people, it, it, it's something that I have trouble understanding. Like, a lot of females, like I, I do it, the online dating. And uh, online dating app, whenever I like I match with somebody, they be asking me, are you real? You know, you look too good to be single. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm thinking like, I'm just a regular, mm. normal looking nigga. I'm like, yes, I'm real. Like, meet up with me, you know, video mm. chat with me. Like, what, what do I gotta do? But, uh, <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And um, I kind of, kind of lost track of where. Nah, I it's okay. Um, you mentioned. Did you, did you mention um being in a homeless shelter already? I don't think I did, but. Mm. But yeah, when I was 18. Oh yeah, another thing about my life that I feel like I gotta say is I lived. Oh. You did, you did. You had, I'm sorry, you mentioned that um, you were in a shelter and people weren't answering your calls. Oh. What I wanted to do was ask you um, if you, like, 
if you had anything to say for anyone that's in like homeless right now in a shelter and they feel like they don't have anybody in their corner the same way you felt like you didn't um yeah so i was in a homeless shelter not even not not too long ago like two months ago i was living in a homeless shelter before i got my second apartment and um uh, i was in that homeless shelter for i'd say about like six months and um you're gonna be surrounded by exactly what i was talking about hate like those people they cannot go throughout the day without their their high and mm. some some of them some of them they don't even do drugs they just smoke cigarettes all day or like like multiple packs of cigarettes and um i think that's another thing about saving your soul like some people look at like drugs as like an escape from from their stress but me when i was in the homeless shelter the only the only i, w I wouldn't consider it a drug but the only thing i was doing it was, was uh smoking weed and i was looking at everybody else and these people was really on different drugs and i felt like if i continue living here and uh, my 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 life goes down i feel like if I don't do anything to to save myself, I'm gonna become one of them. Mm. And um, if you're in a homeless shelter and you feel like you can get better instead of getting lower, just focus on that. Just focus on that, because it, it's, it's not gonna be the same situation as me. I looked at it through drugs. The drugs and the alcohol, especially alcohol, is, is uh, I don't drink, I've never really been a drinker, but, Whatever it is about alcohol, I just didn't find that people like. And, and then, you know, you, you start to lose control of your, your emotions when you get drunk. And, you know, I feel like the devil is behind hate. So, so like, we kept you in the frame of mind that you knew that you can be in where you, yes, you were sedated, yeah. but you also, kept yourself emotionally strong and and you had your willpower intact still like the the the, the marijuana didn't lead you into a course of action that would have you not get your own home right or, and you know what's beautiful about that um i i actually you were actually one of the friends that i started smoking with like smoking weed with and one thing that uh, when I'm smoking by myself, I think about the past. You know, mm. it, that's what that's one thing that weed makes me do. Like, it, I, I feel like it's what it what it brings for you. What are you focusing on when you're high, but for weed? Mm -hmm. You know, because um, if you're sad and you smoke weed, I feel like that emotion will. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I feel like if you're angry though and you smoke weed, it won't do that with anger. I feel like anger calms you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. And uh, that's why I never really gave up on weed. I actually, other people make me feel like, you know, Yo, you need to stop smoking weed and blah, blah, blah. And I, I really think of, like, do I need to stop? Like, you know, I, I knew back <laughs> a few months ago, if I want to get a job, I gotta stop smoking this weed, but now it's legal. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like more reasons to see the positivity of that. Yeah, cause you don't, nobody knows how the world is gonna change. They're just going based off of their own uh, hypothesis. Yeah. Um, what does save your soul mean to you? Uh, I feel like at, when you're growing up as a human being, especially in the time that we're growing up in now, there is so much in the environment to turn you into a nasty person, to mm. turn you into a negative person, to turn you into what I like to call a demon. Mm. You could be an angel, you could be a demon, but nobody's gonna be perfect. Mm. And um, you got you got certain music that, like for, for example, if I have a son, I would rather, 
show him the music that calmed me down and the music that made me think before I show him music that's like, you know, fuck them niggas, we got beef with them niggas, we wanna mm. kill them niggas, you know what I'm saying? I don't, and I think that's, I think uh, when you're when you're a baby, when you're young, the only real people that could really teach you that is your parents. Your parents want you to be, no matter what, your, your blood parents are gonna want you to be the angel. Mm -hmm. So, saving your soul is knowing what to be around. Mm. Knowing what to be around, knowing how to, uh, how to fight your, what you, what you always desire. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Things you desire might not always be good for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel you. Sometimes you might you might fall in love with a with a girl, but you at the same time, in that same time, you have to uh, focus on something in your life so that you could really be happy with that girl. Mm -hmm. And that might cause drama because the girl might think you ignoring her, but you're not really ignoring her. You're trying to make things. So you gotta learn to be open with people. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Saving your soul is it's all about knowing what's right and wrong because they're well for always. you yeah for you and for the people that you love okay that's beautiful for, the, for you and the people that you love and there's always going to be right there's always going to be wrong because i def i also believe in yin and yang if there's left there is right if there's up down red blue there's always an opposite so if there's right there's go you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. if they if, if the world wasn't right and wrong everybody would just be walking around like robots Mm. No, no emotions. No, I, I just got to do this and then pour in the water, drink the water, mm. pee, sleep. <laughs> no emotions throughout the day. Not thinking about, is this water good for me? You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know. So, I feel like if nobody saves their soul, that's the world we're going to. The, the world of robots. The mm. world of not, you know, pe people not thinking about what's right and wrong and just doing whatever the world tells them mm. um, you know there's a lot of things on social media that could be positive but it's definitely a lot that could be negative and i feel like you know it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> definitely a lot.